Welcome to Cairo Author Insights. This is a, a really important occasion for me because one of my heroes, author of the book, 33. And by the way, just before, and I know Dan's going to want to have his introduction in a moment, before I do, this is not just a book that you read. This is a book that you study. In my notes over here, I don't even see that. I've got writing all through it because I didn't just read this book. I studied it. I took notes from it. It became part of my tip, part of my communication in practice. It is such a profound and powerful book for chiropractic, for chiropractors, and also for their education and communication to impact the health and lives of their patients, their clients, the community, and humanity. Dr. David Ciro is an incredible visionary chiropractor and author of the best-selling 33. Also, you know, the founder and director at Vida Chiropractic in Argentina, Brazil, uh, Chile, and even in Spain. He has been a graduate of Sherman College, a chiropractor for over 22 years, a mentor and coach, also with his life evolution, personal growth program, and experience based on the 33 principles. I think if there is one chiropractor that epitomizes you know, Einstein's quote, brilliance is taking a complex idea and making it simple, is Dr. David Ciro, whose vision and mission as a chiropractor is to connect chiropractors and humanity to the science of the philosophy, sorry, to the essence of the philosophy, science and art of chiropractic. David Ciro, it is my great honor and pleasure. I'm very excited for this conversation to have you here today. Welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's, it, the honor is mine. The honor is mine. Uh, you've been such an advocate for philosophical chiropractic and you are such a, a passionate chiropractor and the work that you've done throughout the world is simply incredible. Today I'd like to talk with you again about this incredible book. So let's just begin, just start with talking, just as, you know, you've got so much to say, so much wisdom and knowledge and insight um, and you're speaking philosophy. I'd love to just hear your story um, to begin with and particularly in relation to your philosophy. Okay, great. Marcus, thank you so much. So when I started in chiropractic school, I, I'm, I feel so blessed because I started chiropractic school at Life College in Atlanta, Georgia, when Dr. Sid Williams, the founder of Life College, was the president. So I actually, like my second day of school, walked up to him and said, uh, I would like you to be my first mentor. And, and he said, okay, great. No one really ever asked me that so direct. You know, I have tons of people I mentor, but like so directly, so early in their career. And he was like, he invited me to come and meet with them. And so I started meeting with him and he introduced me to Dr. Fred Barge, who became my second mentor. And, and Fred Barge actually was on the campus that day and said, said I want you to meet this guy. He said, sounds interesting. Like he has no fear. So Fred Barge gives me his book and says, I wrote a book called Life Without Fear. So that was like my first, those were my first two mentors. And I got to spend a year and a half at Life College while Sid was there and went to everything that he spoke on and went to all the assemblies. And then about a year and a half in, Life College had some problems with the accreditation. And at the same time, I heard Reggie Gold speak and Arnold Bernier. And so I asked them, look, um, where, do I, where do I go right now? And they said, go to Sherman. So I went to Sherman and Tom Gilardi became my next mentor along with Reggie Gold and Arnold Bernier. And when I showed up at Sherman Marcus, uh, the house that I, that these students said, we already got you a house. So I knock on the door and the door opens and this guy says, hey, I'm Donnie. And I said, oh, are you in my class? He's like, I'm Donnie Epstein. And I said, oh, so you're in first quarter. He said, no, you don't know who I am? No, I don't know who you are. So long story short, he became a mentor of mine as well. And the house I lived in was owned by him. So I, I have this, this amazing, I feel so blessed because these all became my personal friends and mentors, along with Joe Strauss as well, and Irene Gold and Betty Gilardi. And so really I feel so blessed because my introduction into pure chiropractic was like, I feel like, like so few in, the, in, in our profession, especially in our generations. So, that, so I feel like I felt from that point on this powerful, need and, and desire to not only 
evolve what they taught me, but also help live on what they taught me and, and really bring this to a bigger place in our profession. Uh, and so what I tried to do is take the best of all my mentors and refine it down. And I really love what you said at the beginning, Pete, because I feel like that is my gift for the profession to make things simple. I'm, I'm, I'm not a complex guy. I like taking complex ideas and making them very simple. I'm a practical guy. And, and that's one of the things I got about Tom Gillardi. He's a very practical man. And so he was able to take these concepts and make them very simple. And, I, and he always would teach me, if you have this philosophy that can't be put into practice in a simple way, get a new philosophy. And, and so, you know, that, that's really what drives me every single day. And it is a compelling story, powerful driving force, and, and it has led to a long impact throughout the world for what you've been able to do. The 33 Principles book, I think, you know, perhaps encapsulizes all of that and the message that, that, it, that it has for chiropractors, in particular their understanding of philosophy. So share with me how that project, you know, what, what was the motivation? What was the, the purpose behind that project? Where did it, where did it come from in terms of it as an, uh, an idea in your, in your mind and in your heart? I can't take credit for the idea because the idea was my wife. She, she said to me one day, um, I just got a message from out of nowhere and it said, you have to write this book. And she gave me the idea, like it has to be on the 33 principles. And she kind of started to give me the idea. And I said, that's brilliant. I'm done. And, and so the idea really, I took it from there and, and brought, uh, brought it into the material world. But really what I wanted to do was have something different. Like it wasn't about me. It was about a voice of a lot of different chiropractors and some with a lot of experience, some with less experience, but all kind of focused on the same idea. And I wanted to actually, you know, Marcus, it's interesting because I received all the, the, um, the, 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 uh, the, you know, the, they brought all the principles to me and they were supposed to be laid out in a certain type of way uh, with four questions, but a lot of them didn't really follow the format and I had to make a decision. Am I going to edit this or am I going to leave it as they responded? So I decided in the end, I was going to leave it as they responded. Now, I'm working on a couple other books that are going to be a little different, but in this one, I decided I'm just going to leave it as is. I actually, I, I, I had a professional editor from Amazon do the editing, but I didn't change what they said. And I decided not even to respond back to them and say, Hey, I asked for it in a different format. I just decided this is what it's supposed to be. So, and, and actually the other thing, which I say at the beginning is I'm not in agreement with everything they said either. So there's some principles in there that, I, but what I wanted to create was conversation. And so for me, the purpose of that book was not for it to be philosophically perfect. It was to add color to the profession with a bunch of different points of view and different experience levels and with the with the main focus of creating conversation and i believe that that that's what the purpose of it was really in in that in that main point i did that beautifully and i think the i mean you you have uh, your own voice woven throughout the book but i do like the fact that it is and i think innate loves diversity and that diversity is embodied within the book and we we need to have our our own interpretation ability within that context and, and you've certainly provided that. I'd love to hear about how you were able to collaborate with people. So you've got some world-class speakers as well as some, as I said, relatively unknowns and that's a beautiful combination. But we've, you know, I've, I've been on stage with Phil McMaster um, at the Philosopher's Symposium in Australia. Um, we had Gilles Lamarche on our Neuroscience Summit and it was an incredible you know, opportunity to speak to some of these great minds. And so how were you able to outreach to some incredible chiropractors and also um, you know people who wanted to become involved with the project how does collaboration on something of this you know the 33 different speakers plus your own voice how do you bring something like this together it's so interesting because what part of the vision was that i also wanted to have my voice in the middle to kind of tie things together so 
when I started to ask people, I just shared with them the vision. I said, this is the vision. Uh, do you, would you like to be in it? And really, almost everyone told me from the beginning. Now, it was interesting because a few people would ask, that were in more political positions would ask, well, who's going to be in the book? Well, is this president going to be in the book? Because if they are, I'm not going to be in the book. So it also, it also, to be totally honest, showed me, it gave me a little glimpse of our profession on a big level, from a microscopic level, because I saw what, one of the reasons why we don't move forward. It's like, is this guy going to be in it? Because if he is, I'm not going to be in it. And if this president is, I'm not going to be in it. And I was like, the purpose of the book is to bring us together around the central idea, not a political, you know, you're in this school, you're in this group. No, it, that was the whole purpose behind it. And I realized in trying to get collaboration, why we're not really moving forward. And this was in all within subluxation based or centered chiropractic. And so that was really interesting for me to see. So I did get turned down by maybe 12 people. Um, and some were just busy. You know, they just said, I don't have time. And I respect that. Um, and I respected all the answers that I got back. I said, okay, I understand. Uh, and then there were some issues with timing. You know, sometimes people didn't get stuff on, on time. But for the most part, it was really a yes right away. I got the collaborations very quickly, um, you know, and maybe I wasn't super, I thought I was really clear with the way it was to be laid out, but you know, the chiropractors don't like to follow rules. We're, we're rebels. So I just said, I don't want, I don't want, okay, this is what I got. I don't, okay. You didn't want to follow the rules. That's fine. And let's put it in as it is. So, you know, but it was, it was a beautiful project because, I, what I wasn't looking for was perfection. I was looking for the real raw deal. And I feel like that's what it came out like. But people were really supportive. When the book came out, what was amazing is everyone except for one person, when the book came out, they were like, they were helping to promote it, it put it out there. And so it just started to go viral. And without doing any promotions, the book just moved and moved and moved and it's getting into a lot of hands. That's, that's brilliant. And I think, you know, one of the things we want to do um, within all the master is to support the chiropractors, having that vision of being able to write their own book, share their message. And there are a number of reasons to write a book. Obviously, you know, you can do it because it's your call to write or because you want to grow your practice or because you have a message to share. But the, the interesting thing for those chiropractors out there thinking of writing a book and what I heard you say there was one, collaboration is a powerful method of sharing your vision as long as you're really clear on your vision and you can communicate that and articulate that that doesn't mean that everybody's always always going to align with your vision but people who do share the same um, core values the same interests, the love of chiropractic are going to come on board equally not everybody's going to follow the process that you set down for them and if you can adapt to that then perfection finds its own way to express itself through your work through your writing and ultimately you know, when you have a really valuable message to share, it will be shared because of the nature of the way that, you know, viral communication works. So, you know, it's never going to be perfect. And so many chiropractors think, I've got to get my message perfect. I've got to get my writing perfect. Uh, the launch has to be perfect. I, I can't write my book because my idea isn't so clear. There's no perfection. And that, you know, I always say to my team, done is better than perfect. And interesting enough, when you let go of some of those constraints, as you've done and seen with 33, the perfection is embodied in the fact that the message gets out there into the hands of the people. And you know, that was just a really great story for, for people to understand when they're working towards you know, writing a book and sharing the message. So would, would that be a, a reasonable summation of your experience? Yeah. Thank you for noticing that. You're spot on. I mean, life, life, we have in our profession, like people like Rob Sinnett, Simon Sense on that they're more scholarly and they have these, you know, Stevenson's, I read that book like 55 times, you know, I didn't want to duplicate their work because that's not who I am. And I'm grateful that we have them because I'm Joe Strauss. I read all of his books, you know, and I'm grateful that we have them because we need that. But we also need, and I felt like there's a piece missing in more raw, more, more just down to earth, not so scholarly stuff that's written in a way that everyone can connect to and it's and it's a different expression we need all types of expressions in our profession you know and 
what I wanted to do was kind of bring up that's that was the purpose of this book really as well is just to kind of show not a, from a scholarly way more from just a, in everyday talking we're sitting here talking share chiropractic with me you know and 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 that's what I wanted to really bring plus something that you could just pick up a chapter and say okay this makes me think I actually had a few authors that said well I don't agree with some of this stuff and I said well I don't agree with it either but that's our profession. You're not going to agree with everything that people say or think, but we should be able to be mature enough to say, you know what? I don't agree with this. And this is why I have a conversation. That's how we evolve. So the point of that also was to give different colors to the, to the principles and to be mature enough to say, I don't agree with this. And this is why, and let's discuss this and, and evolve, evolve. And it's beautiful. And again, you spoke earlier about that, but you highlighted just then the ability to open a conversation is part of philosophical maturity. I, I love the, I, I read, you know, set, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey. And at one point in time, there's a passage in the book and he said, the purpose of communication is to have your understanding and beliefs changed. And that doesn't mean that you have to change, but the opportunity to change is there. If you're already closed-minded, if you are opening a book, if you're reading do you read and say, I don't agree, and put the page down on the book down and you don't move forward, then you're not growing as a as a chiropractor, as a person, or philosophically. And so to have that opportunity to read information that may not necessarily make perfect sense to you from your own paradigm or belief system, but it opens a dialogue, a conversation that brings chiropractors together and therefore the community of chiropractic together. It had, had a really profound impact because, you know, we at the moment, I'm not sure whether you're aware of this and maybe we should invite you to this group. We are actually doing 33 yeah. a book review within our chiropractic um, book group at the moment. So it has, you know, it does bring community so together. It does allow people to, to look at their own interpretation of messages and to, to go deep into their personal understanding and therefore their capacity. And I know you talk about this at life evolution, you know, to grow and to have a new experience because of your... Um, your engagement with the book and your engagement with the people that are reading the book and in conversation with them. So I think it's such a powerful way of writing and communicating. And it also takes, as you said, the need to be a perfect literary artist to have a scholarly research and writing. But at the same time, it adds that incredible value of, of depth, of warmth, of understanding and, and deepening the, the, the relationship the chiropractor has with with philosophy, with chiropractic. And I, I, you know, I'd, I'd love for you to share with, with that in mind, what is it about the 33 principles that, that and I know that you said that your wife brought this to you from you know, innate great um, vision for your life, but what, what within you has really been changed by writing the book? What experience have you had that the book has brought forth? First, I want to say thank you because you're inspired. When, when people like you, I don't even know you till today. I'm so grateful we connected, but it, it inspires me to, to write more. And actually, I'm in the middle, in the beginning, actually, of two books. Um, but it, it like motivates me and inspires me to get moving faster. Um, and, and so thank you for that. Thank you for that. And, you know, the 33 principles... <clears throat> When I started to understand them, I had a whole nother career before chiropractic. And when I started to understand the 33 principles and realized, you know, we're really limiting their use within chiropractic because these could actually be applied to the economy. You know, one of my best friends in, in Argentina before was the minister of economy in this country. And he actually started to apply some of the principles to the economy here. Um, and so if they could be applied to all aspects of life, not just your health, not just your practice, your everyday decision-making with your children or finances, if you really go deep within them, I mean, they are a blueprint for life. And so, you know, I've had some major challenges in my own life in different ways and the principles, I, I can't even imagine going through some of the challenges I've been through in my own personal life without having the principles as my GPS, as my guide, with making some really tough life decisions, it, it made it pretty easy. Um, and so I think we're actually 
a lot of times limited in how we utilize them because a lot of times we don't go deep in the understanding of them and ask different questions like, okay, how does principle one apply to my finances? <laughs> you know, how, how does this apply to how I raise my, ch my child? And not just, okay, my child has a fever, how do I apply this? Or, you know, I have a pain, how do I apply this? Or I'm in my practice. You know, and so for me, it's an integration in your practice and in your life. And those two should really be one because that creates authenticity. And for me, authenticity is one of the biggest characteristics of success because it's, 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 it's a vibration. And people, when you're authentic, they pick up on that vibration. They're attracted to that vibration. So it, it's, it's really, that's what inspired me to like, and that's one of the big things I got out of writing this book as well, is that the people that are writing the, their, their principles, it's their authentic understanding of that principle. But I also realized that even chiropractors maybe limit themselves in their understanding. They haven't maybe gone deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's why I'm grateful for for other authors that are out there that are writing uh, David Koch's book on the 33 principles. I don't know if you saw that book, but you know, I mean, Steven, since I read the book, I'm on my 53rd time. And every time I read it, it's like, this is new for me, you know? And I ask myself different questions. Like how does this, what I'm reading apply to the decision I'm going to make tomorrow on, you know, what I'm going to buy in the supermarket or on my finances or my practice. How can I apply this better to my practice to be more authentic and congruent? And when you go down that, into that rabbit hole, let's say, there's no limit. There's no limit. It's infinite because it brings up, Einstein talks about, as you find an answer to a question, <laughs> you have 20 more questions. And then you find the answer to those 20 questions, then you have 100 more questions. And that's what the philosophy should be for us. It's, it's not static. It's not, you know, I open this book and that's it. No, it's, it's living. It should bring us deeper and deeper and deeper. And as we go deeper, we have more questions, go deeper, more questions. But it also provides clarity because it keeps opening a perspective for us to make better decisions ultimately. It's beautiful. So the, the very research into your, your passion and your purpose of book writing offers you certainty, clarity, vision, perspective, depth, yes. and therefore it creates a more whole, complete human being. The, the, the experience of, of both writing and then expressing is a, is a transformational tool in itself. And you know, so I know if you write philosophically, it's far easier to do that, but it's true for any area of interest of expression. So I think that's beautiful. I think, you know, I, I want again, I really appreciate your time and the message you've shared. I'd love to, to really, you know, in bringing this to conclusion, I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on, on chiropractic. Um, you know, we, we know we're at a crossroads in chiropractic for so many years now. And how, how can chiropractors, you know, galvanize their certainty, um, you know, get really clear on, them, on themselves and their purpose and the vision of chiropractic? Have you got a, a message of thought for the, for the chiropractors out there? And, you know, what they could be doing moving forward for them, for their own self and for the chiropractic profession. Beautiful. So I just finished the seven day Tony Robbins seminar and, and the message I got from him for the seven days was this clarity is power. Clarity is power. You, 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 the, the more clear you are, the more power you have, the less clear you are, the less power you have simple. And in our profession, it's all about getting the nerve system clear, bring the nerve system into clarity. It, what brings us clarity is the principles of chiropractic. And the more we understand the principles, the more clear we can become. And so my invitation, if we're gonna, if we're gonna transform this profession, is to get clarity on the principles. And that will bring you clarity in everything else. You know, BJ talked about get the big idea, all else follows. And I, and I believe it is that simple. It's getting clarity in this. And also, I believe this. It's time, Marcos, to, you know, we've, we've spent enough time in fighting. But what, what I feel is like this. Let us focus in on what we love. You focus on what you love. 
either we find a way to live in peace or we separate. Simple as that. But I, I just, I just don't believe. Like I haven't spent any ounce of my time in the last 10, 15 years fighting anything. It just, it just created an unhealthy situation for myself. It didn't get anywhere. And so what I realize is, if we're going to evolve as a profession, we need to do one of two things. Focus on our, on our, we obviously have two separate missions in this profession. Let each part focus on theirs and live in peace or separate. But it's time to like stop the fighting because it doesn't solve anything. It hasn't, it never will. And, and neither of us will reach our full potential in, 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 in what we want to see brought into the world. So, you know, it's time to get clear and get clear on your message instead of fighting, even to the extent of we don't need to fight against medical doctors. We just need to get clear on what we do and bring it to the world in a bigger place. And, and, and that really, for me, is where it's at. It's get clear, bring your, your focus into such a big expansion of vision that you don't have time to spend fighting other people. Um, and that, for me, will start to shift things. That is beautiful. That is, again, a beautiful personified. Dr. David Sierra, I appreciate you, your gift to chiropractic, your service to the chiropractic profession and humanity. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. And the last thing I want to say is you can get the book on Amazon. It's still, it's still on there. Uh, j just go on Amazon, put in David Serial 33. You can get it there. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much for having me on the program. You're welcome. And the link will be on the video for this and on the page for the book and for your program. So it's, you know, you, like you said, the work that you've done, invaluable and transformational. So, so grateful for you, for your time, your effort, your contribution, and your relentless energy and service of chiropractic. Thank you. Thank you so much.